the great Stephen Biko, who writes in his book, I Write What I Like, comes up with the concept of black consciousness, and to raise the consciousness of the South Africans who were fighting for equality and justice under the apartheid system, which is, again, built upon racism. And so, as I tell my students to always remember, whenever you look at the process of defining, it's always important to look at from where is that person speaking or writing. Yeah, as we said, a loci of enunciation. From what vantage point? For whom are they speaking? Who is the audience they're trying to address? Are they getting paid? Are they a consultant? And so forth. You know, is it subjective? Is it objective? And um, we should always know at what all all times, yeah, what is the so-called positionality of that voice. And for me, an important voice in talking about or describing or defining what racism is, is to look to those who, in fact, who work the hardest. And in fact, people like Stephen Biko, who gave his life fighting against apartheid. You know, unfortunately, uh, unlike Mandela, which was, who was released from prison, you know, Stephen Biko, died in prison, and in fact, the official story, in fact, was he killed himself while a prisoner. But those in power in South Africa who put, tried to protect the so-called system of racism through apartheid were very fearful of people like Stephen Biko. And so, for me, Biko is a very important representative of those who fight against racism. So if I'm going to look to somebody to explain to me what racism is about, I will look to those voices like Stephen Biko and not to the voices of those who, um, who have benefited off of the privileges of systems of racism. And these words here are very simple, but it's so powerful to understand what racism is about. And in fact, to use these words to explain to all of us today, you know, really what is going on within society and the world today. You know, as Biko says here very clearly, those who know, which Kyle tells you something, what do you mean those who know? Yeah, of course, the idea that there are those who don't. But those who know, as he says, define racism as discrimination. So I want you to look at the word discrimination. The power to discriminate by a group against another. Right? So it's the power of discrimination by a group against another. For the purposes of subjugation, so we get the word subjugation, the power to subjugate or maintain subjugation, to protect the system of subjugation. In other words, one cannot be a racist unless he has the power to subjugate. And that's a very important definition to remember. As you can see, he does not talk about color. That's not the reasoning for so-called um, racism. He's not talking about hatred because that is not the purpose of racism. Racism is about subjugation. Racism is about maintaining subjugation. Racism is an exercise of power, of dominion, of control. As he says, is about discrimination. And what is the purpose of discrimination? Of course, it's always to empower some, one group, and to disempower another group through some kind of mythology. And of course, the mythology could be about color. The mythology can be about person's language, their religion. Whatever is the alibi, as Memi says, whatever is the poison that's used, that is not the question that we should be thinking about. When understanding racism, we must always look at who is subjugating who. Who is dominating who? Who is exercising power over whom? That is the most important element of racism, is to understand the word ism. It is a power of dominance. It's power. The excuse to justify the power will use poison like race. Yeah, we should all realize race is something that is conjured, is created, is, is, is a mythology. But it's used, it's the alibi, it's the poison. It's used for what purpose? To subjugate. And what is the purpose of subjugation? But privilege. Privilege. As some are privileged while others are not. And that is the most important element to understand racism. Is to tie racism with privilege. 
to tie racism with the power to discriminate. So when you think about that question, when you should always wonder about whether or not speech, for example, is racism, or actions are racism, or policies are racism, you should always have to ask the question, who is subjugating who? Who is exercising power over whom? And who, in fact, is trying to protect that system of domination? So I thank Brother Stephen Biko for providing us 